friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Callie Bransport, and I think there's something that many of us can agree on, and that is that we would like to be more organized. But then, life happens. I feel like there is one thing to get your space organized, and it's another thing to keep your space organized. So what I did today is I tried out eight organizing tips for professional organizers to help me not just get organized, but to stay organized. And honestly, some of the tips that I have found from these professionals are really, really good, and I'm super excited to share them with you right now. Okay, so the first tip is from Sharon Lowenheim, and she's from Organizing Goddess, and she says to let your space define how much you own. So the idea here is that you allocate a certain amount of space to a certain thing in your home, and then you stick to that. So personally, I have already been doing this in my closet, like in my wardrobe. So for example, I have a drawer of tees and tanks, I have a drawer for sweaters, I have a drawer for tops and blouses. If that drawer is full, I can't buy something new in that category unless I get rid of something. And that method has worked really good for me in my wardrobe, but I never thought to adopt it to use in like another space in my house. And so I decided to try it out in my pantry because I feel like my pantry, I feel like a pantry is a place that you often end up with like a little bit more than you need. So I decided to allocate certain spots to specific things and I actually did a kitchen organization video which I'll link below and I've started labeling specific areas in my pantry for specific things and I can't buy more of this thing when the spot is full. And this has actually been helping me a lot in two categories in particular, canned goods and pasta. For some reason, I always end up with more boxes of pasta that I really need, and same with canned goods. So it's actually really helped me when I'm making my grocery list. I can look at it and sort of like see that I don't have room for more canned goods right now. So if something's on my list, I gotta take it off, figure out how to use some of the canned goods that are already there. And it's honestly actually been working really well. And probably in the long run, it's gonna help my grocery bill too. And now that I've done this in more than one place, I can really think of a lot of different ways that you could use this. The next tip is from Pooja with Organizing With You. And her tip is to seek functionality over visual appeal. She says that very often we fall into this habit of just like moving piles around to make things look tidy. I am so guilty of this. And instead what we should be doing is looking at our problem areas and try to find solutions and systems that will work for us. So instead of sort of just like carrying piles of clutter around to different areas and tidying them into little stacks to make us feel better, she said that we should look at creating systems that cater to our needs. A place that this happens for me is in my kitchen. My kitchen became a big time dumping ground and I had little piles of everything everywhere and every night I would sort of like tidy each pile but it wasn't actually clean it was just that I created these like little tidy piles to make it feel like it was clean in my mind so instead what I did and again this is a part of when I did my big kitchen organization video which I'll link below is I defined a specific space for every single thing that goes into my kitchen like a specific spot that every single thing goes. I went crazy with my label maker, but it literally has worked because now when I go around and I pick up my kitchen, I'm not stacking things into little random piles. Everything in that kitchen now has a spot where it can go. I looked at what my issues were, like what was piling up. One of the things is like mail and paper, so I got a letter organizer that we keep in our kitchen now. Another thing was some of Miles's arts and crafts. I got some bins. I had some extra space where I could store that stuff. Another thing was like, Whenever I had an ongoing project that I was working on, whether it was a DIY for the house or a craft project or whatever, those would end up in little piles. So now I have a big tote where I keep all of my DIY and my craft stuff that I'm working on at the moment. So I created a system that works for me that gets the clutter out instead of just sort of like tidying it into little piles. And this tip has really worked well to keep my kitchen feeling nice and clean and decluttered. Tip number three is from Linda Samuels of Oso oh Organized, and she says to prevent clutter by having awareness of what you're doing. And the example she gives is when you first walk in the door from being outside. So I don't know about you, but when I first come in the door, usually I kick off my shoes, I throw my keys down on the counter, diaper bag is on the floor, and like whatever other random things I'm trying to hold on into my hands, like my child's cup and like some snacks that he was eating and like the dog leash or whatever it ends up on the counter. So she says instead to be aware of this and to instead make a habit and say, okay, for the first two minutes when I walk in the door, it's dedicated to putting stuff away. And for me, what it really came down to is I needed it to be really easy and accessible. So I needed all of those things that I needed to put down to be very close and accessible to the back door. So when I walk in my back door right now, there's now a place for my son's jacket and my shoes right at the back door. And there's also a shoe organizer right there where I can put my shoes. In our house, shoes were always a huge source of clutter. I would never bring them all the way up to my bedroom every single day. And honestly, I pretty much just wear the same three shoes 
over and over again. So now I have a spot where those shoes live right by the back door where I come in and out. And then lastly, as we walk into the kitchen, I have a hook where my keys go. And then right behind that, there is a uh, paper filer where I can put any mail or paper that I may, may have walked in the door with. This one kind of takes two steps because one, you need to look at what do I always come in the door with and how can I make simple, easy, accessible places to put this away. And then two, you kind of have to develop the habit of doing it. Um, and that takes a little bit of time. So you could try putting a post-it note on your door, the door that you come in, that just reminds you like two minutes, you know, two minutes, put everything away or whatever you want to do because it is going to take a little time to get into the habit of like walk in the door, put the stuff away as opposed to walk in the door and throw all the stuff down. The next tip is from Regina Lark of a clear path and she has a tip that I love and I have used in many aspects of my life and that is that everything has a place and everything goes in its place and the idea is that literally everything in your life has a space where it belongs where it needs to go I had used this tip a lot in my life but I really hadn't like adopted it wholeheartedly to all of the stuff in my life so there were definitely some things that fell through the cracks and so what I've really been trying to do lately is like literally everything that comes into my house I try to have a specific place where it lives, a home where it goes. So whenever I'm picking up, I don't like, I'm not kind of like holding clutter, wondering, you know, moving piles around, wondering where it should go. I'm holding a pen, I know where the pens go. I'm holding like an unpaid bill, I know where the unpaid bills go. So it's really about having a spot where every single thing goes. And Regina even goes as far to say, is don't bring something new into your home until you actually already know where it's going to live. Personally for me, this is one that you can't just like tackle in a weekend. It's just something you kind of slowly move through. I'm still personally like always moving through it and finding things and realizing that they don't have homes and then finding the right spots for where they go. For me, what really works well is labeling things. Label Maker has been my BFF on my sort of organization journey because I will label something and then, you know, when I'm in a rush, when I'm putting stuff away, I'm like, oh yeah, this is where this stuff goes. Oh yeah, this is where this goes. Also obviously helps other people in your life, you know, like husbands, but the challenge really is to find a place where this item should live or get rid of it. The next tip is from Jody Watson of Supreme Organization and she says to practice purging often. She says a lot of us tend to neglect purging and only do it twice or once a year and when we do that clutter tends to uh, pile up very very quickly. She said instead purging should really just be a part of everyday life. As you are doing your general cleaning up around the house, you should be looking at what you can get rid of, what doesn't need to be in the house anymore, whether it's trash, whether it's something that needs to go to the mailbox that you have to send to your friend's house, whatever it is, we should get in the practice of constantly purging and getting things out of the house that don't need to be there. For me, some of the ways that I've adopted this tip um, and sort of like brought it into my home is that I often can be a big pile maker. And so instead I'm trying to address those things immediately. The minute I get a box in the mail and I open it, I try to break it down and put it in the recycling and if our recycling is full I try to put it right in our trunk and take it to the dump. I also just try to get in the habit of not letting things pile up. So another example is mail. When we bring mail into the house I open the mail right away and I say to Michael like okay what do we need to keep and like what pieces of it do we need to keep and the rest goes right into this recycling right away so that mail doesn't pile up. But what I really like about this is when you get in the habit of constantly thinking what can I get rid of it actually also makes you really aware when you're thinking of bringing something into your house. So not only does it benefit us in the sense that we are getting rid of stuff that we don't need in the house but it's the added benefit that we really think about something before we bring it into our home and bring it into our lives that possibly could end up being just extra clutter. The next tip is from Beth Penn of Be Neato Bar and her tip is to take a photo of your space. I really love this idea because sometimes we live in a space, we become so used to it and so comfortable that like we literally become blind to clutter. We just like don't even realize it is there anymore and a really easy way to sort of look back look past that like blindness that we have because it's our own home is to look at a picture of a space. So step back, take a picture of a shelf, take a picture of a closet, take a picture of your kitchen. And when you look at the picture, it allows you to sort of step out of the space and you immediately will start seeing where there's little piles of clutter that needs to get picked up. And I love this little photo trick because it just allows you to see something that maybe you wouldn't see when you're just walking through the space. Okay, my next tip is from Sienna Turner of the Sienna Method and her tip is to put it away now 
rather than later. The reason that a lot of accumulate clutters in our house is because we're just busy. I don't know if you're like me, but I feel like I'm a, a constant state of motion from the minute I wake up until the minute I go to bed. And so it's really easy for me to put something to the side and say, I'll get to that later. I'll walk it out to the garage tomorrow. I'll you know bring that down to the basement another day. And then three weeks go by because I'm very busy and that item is still sitting there. So there's sort of two little mind tricks that I use for this method. The first one is if it's gonna take me less than 60 seconds, I probably can do it. So if it's just running something down to the basement, if it's just running it to a cabinet upstairs, if it's just putting it into the bathroom, I probably have time to do that. The other one that I really love using is to try to get in the habit of never leaving a room empty handed. There's almost always something in one room that can go to another room. So if I'm in the living room and I'm going into the kitchen, I might see that Miles' sippy cup is sitting there and I'll take it with me. I'm taking Miles up to bed, so I'll grab his pile of books that I put on the stairs to go up. Just be constantly thinking of what can I take with me where I'm going and you're sort of pushing items to their final destination instead of putting them off to put them away another day. And the final tip that I saw actually a lot of people mention and we've touched on a little bit already in this video is to just like label the heck out of everything. I feel like you can't over label your home because what a lot of these organizing people said is that basically the more something is labeled or if something is labeled, the much higher chance of likelihood it is that it is going to end up back where it goes and end up back where it goes a lot quicker. And it really at the end of the day, having everything labeled in a place where everything could in a place where everything needs to go is going to make that constant motion of organizing just feel a lot smoother. All right guys, that was my eight tips from organizing professionals that I tried. Some of these were ones that like I kind of used, but I feel like I've adopted them a lot more lately. I really, really like these. I feel like they're helping me keep my space, my life and my like home just more organized. And I don't know about you guys, but personally I'm just like more at peace and I'm more productive when my space is like picked up and organized. I don't know if it's just me. Let me know in the comments down below if I'm all alone. Anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If this is your first time finding my channel, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button and stick around. I post one to two new videos every single week. As always, I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video. If you liked today's video, I think that you would also enjoy this video a lot. And make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. You can hit this button right here or hit it down below. Make sure to hit the bell notification as well because that way you'll get notified every single time one of my videos goes live.